you. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is Big Data SV. This is Silicon Angle and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, joined my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest is Prakash Nanduri, the CEO and co-founder of Pexada, who launched live on The Cube at Big Data NYC just a few months ago. Welcome back to The Cube. Great to have you back. And we love when they launch on theCUBE because we just amplify the hell out of it. We love it, it's like, it's like a newsroom. We call it the new mobile newsroom. We like to cover all the action. Yes. Uh, we go where the action is, that's theCUBE. So tell us, um, since New York, since Big Data NYC, what's happened, what's the news? Thanks John, thanks Dave. Um, you know, in the last 90 days since we met, uh, it's been a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal ride for us at Baxada. Uh, what I'm very excited about is the fantastic uh, market adoption we have seen. Um, in, uh, we have seen adoption uh, of the PAX, uh, the PAX personal uh, subscription licenses, the PAX shares, and our PAX, uh, PAX Enterprise editions. We've had traction on all three. Uh, two customers that are uh, highlighted uh, are uh, the Danon Company, uh, the wonderful purveyors of great uh, dairy products, um, and uh, we started working with them early last year and um, in, a, uh, in a work group type of license. And we're really thrilled that they have uh, adopted Pexada on a much greater level to solve very critical um, uh, data preparation challenges that they have for their enterprise analytics needs. Uh, in addition, we've also seen wonderful companies such as Zep uh, come in and purchase the Pax, uh, Pax personal license. And you will see that uh, in the case of Zep, they're doing really interesting things such as uh, spend analysis. And in spend, instead of spending hours in munging data and getting data prepared to do that analysis, with, uh, with Pexada, they're able to do it in, in minutes and not months. And that's what we're really thrilled about. So, uh, you know, talk a little bit more about Pe Pexada, what it is, how it works. I mean, when we first heard it on the cube, we said this sounds like magic, right? You know, and now you're, you're bringing real customer examples in. Mm -hmm. So I want to go there in a minute, but just refresh our memory on sort of what it is, how it works, that secret sauce behind Pexada. Absolutely. So. Paxata is the industry's first adaptive data preparation solution that targets a business analyst. What does that mean? Uh, anytime you're doing an analytical exercise, uh, the fact of the matter is any t anywhere between uh, 40 to 60 percent, and in some cases 80 percent of the exercise is centered around bringing data from multiple data sources, being able to clean that data, merge that data, shape that data, so that it is ready for anal uh, analysis. So before you can do any real analysis and get insight or make decisions, you have to prepare the data. Today, that is a very, very cumbersome task. It's generally, it takes, uh, you know, in some cases months, in some cases weeks, uh, and really destroys the weekends and the lives of our champions or PAX pros who are business analysts. What Paxada has done for these people is to take away all the hard tasks, the manual tasks of merging, cleaning, and shaping data, and using the power of um, our IntelliFusion platform, which allows, a, uh, which allows a business analyst to really focus most of their time on analytics and uses the power of algorithms um, and distributed computing and the power of uh, Hadoop to be able to bring all those um, data preparation capabilities in an automated fashion for the business analysts. So that's what we're changing their lives by doing all the heavy lifting for them so that they can focus on analytics. So let's go into the Danon example. Yes. Uh, take us back to sort of when you first started, you had said it was a little work group license. Mm -hmm. There was probably a POC in there early on. So take us back to the beginning. What was the problem that they were trying to solve? And, and take us through where we are today. Yeah, I think it starts first with the with the great vision of Tim Weaver, the CIO of North America for Danon. I love when he says he has an organization where, uh, where he calls it the business uh, 
traditionally, uh, traditionally has number of analytical requirements and therefore uses a number of tools. In his words, he calls it BYOBI, bring your own BI, because marketing may need a specific analytical tool and um, sales may use, uh, use a different analytical tool. And what they all have, though, as a business is a challenge of preparing data, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, in the case of Danon, they are very much focused on making sure that their customers are able to have healthy lives by eating the right kind of dairy products, the great products that Danon makes. Uh, they need to be very much in, on top of what products are being uh, built, uh, what products are being manufactured, how they're being distributed, and which retail customer gets the product at the right time at the right place. Uh, so they, they uh, do analysis and keep uh, looking at data, um, looking at all the different pinch points in their value system, and they use a number of analytical tools. One of the primary tools they use actually is ClickView, uh, which is their dashboarding and analytical tool. Um, well, different business uh, groups need to be able to um, source data from different uh, different uh, sources. Uh, frankly, they come. The data comes not only from internal systems and spreadsheets, but a lot of the data they're getting is from external sources, from their retail trading partners, from companies like Nielsen and other uh, other sources. They need to be able to merge, clean, and match all of this data before they can analyze it in a tool like ClickView. That's what they started doing with Paxata, the data preparation piece, and what they have now done is to go and expand their usage across multiple groups and multiple use cases. So the data is relatively structured or not necessarily? The data that Paxata can handle, uh, Paxata handles structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. That's the power of the IntelliFusion platform that we have. Hmm. Okay, and in the case of Dan, Dan and it's pretty diverse. Uh, data in, in they, they use a lot of structured and semi-structured data. Okay, uh, um, so okay, so so uh, um, talk about the unstructured piece because that's that's the hard part. Well, I guess both hard parts is mm -hmm. is, is blending mm -hmm. the different you know varieties of data texture, if you will. Um, what are you seeing people do with the unstructured piece? Talk about what your capabilities are there. Are you talking about text? Um, I analytics, interpretation, or, or, or what are they doing with it after they you know, cleanse it or prepare it? So what is interesting is, unlike in traditional world where all the analytics you had to do was based on the data you had in your proprietary systems, mm -hmm. which was mostly structured, is now in order to do an exercise like a customer targeting exercise or to do a um, spend analysis exercise, you want to bring uh, data from different sources. A lot of times you bring data from both structured and, and semi-structured, but also potentially from unstructured data sources if you're doing demographics or if you're doing some kind of a, um, uh, social, um, um, a social indicator of, of of uh, your product. You want to be able to merge data from an unstructured source with the proprietary and personal uh, data sets you have which are structured or semi-structured. The difficult challenge is merging these to then make uh, sense of it and make a decision out of it. That's the power that Paxata brings to the table. It allows you to take data such as unstructured data from social and bring combine it with structured data, whether that's your spreadsheets or whether that's your databases that you have internally, and then make a more complete decision, you know, in time and in an accurate manner. That's the real power of Paxata. I want to ask you some of the trends you're seeing in the marketplace. What do you like in terms of the trends? What are some signals that you're seeing that make you excited about the current market of big data? I think uh, one of the most interesting things is, there's, there's a few, but one that I want to really stress about is that we're moving now from a time where a lot of the business analysts are very comfortable with using data visualization and analytical tools and data discovery tools such as ClickView and Tableau, et cetera. Um, this is now the time where what it becomes is as these solutions permeate through the enterprise, it's really important to start focusing on important things like data preparation, governance, enrichment, quality. And so one of the trends is now from going from data discovery to governed data discovery, which is really important. That's why I'm so thrilled about the advances we have made. You know, 
Paxata, by being the industry's first um, adaptive data preparation platform, is solving real data preparation problems for real customers, whether they be large enterprises such as Danon or uh, uh, wonderful companies like Zep, and whether they are at an enterprise grade or whether they are at a personal or a share grade. The other thing that is really important, it's, advanced, it's, it's very important to, to see, is the trend is um, for business analysts and the IT organization to be able to leverage solutions such as Paxata very easily. That's where being able to deliver these, this solution both on a multi-tenant public cloud environment and on private cloud deployments becomes very exciting. Well, I got to say, the adaptive data is something that Dave and I talk about, and Dave, govern data discovery. That is really relevant because data discovery has kind of been loose, seat of the pants. So, yeah, that's mm. good, unstructured. Yes. It's natural. It's organic, it's evolution. Yes. Now you're starting to see some discipline, mm -hmm. some processes to it. Yes. At the same time, more data. Yes. <laughs> so it's a nice flywheel. Absolutely. That's why when we, when we came out with our vision of adaptive data, uh, data preparation, we said from the beginning that this is about having a comprehensive end-to-end -end platform. And that involves five major capabilities. It's around being able to enable the business analyst to integrate multiple data sources, to enrich that data on the fly and in the context of the analysis she or he is conducting, to clean both semantically and syntactically, to be able to share the data sets in real time uh, amongst their peers and with IT. And last but not least, is to be able to have a governance set up for data, which doesn't prevent usage, but also enables and empowers the users. So Prakash, I got to ask you my last question. I know we're tight on time yeah. and you got a hard stop. So we just had Andre on and he, sa he said, look, there's this new role emerging because yes. of this whole big data meme, uh, the chief data officer. And right. it's a parallel role to the, to the CIO. Mm -hmm. I mean, given that you guys are all about the data mm -hmm. and, and preparing the data, it's the center of the, the data universe. Are you seeing that sort of same role emerge and do you see that role reporting to the CIO or do you see it separate? It will vary depending on the organization and depending on the structure and the, and the expertise of the people involved, frankly. But I think what is really important is now is the time when data preparation is real, and that's why we're so excited that in addition to the fantastic customer traction we've, we've received, we are also announcing advances to the IntelliFusion platform, and we are throwing open a challenge. We're throwing open a challenge for the PAX formation challenge, as we call it, and we're inviting any business and analyst anywhere to go up to our website, sign up, and if you give us three raw data sources, we will give you an answer set in a very short amount of time, in hours. And because we are saying that now data preparation is real, and it's ready for usage, and it's ready for mass consumption, we're ready to go. That's what is the transformation we're, we're pushing. Prakash, thank you so much for coming on. Great to hear from you. Uh, we're excited by your success. Obviously, um, launching on theCUBE was we love it, you know, and we're going to be watching you all the way, rooting for you. You're a tech athlete, and uh, you're in a hot space, and we love your thesis and everything about your company. Thank you so much. It's, del it's delightful to come back here. Thank you so much. This Take is the Cube. We'll be right back with our next guest, talking about big data, munching on the big data, analyzing, commentary, rumors, opinion, facts, all here on the Cube, extracting the secret from the noise live in Silicon Valley. I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back.